Hello everyone, so today I am here to do a book review and that is on The NYX by Nathan Hill. Yes, I finally read this book and I think I'm ready to review it. This book took me quite a long time to read. If you guys follow me on Goodreads, you saw the dramaticness of trying to read this book. It took me like 25 days or something to read, basically an entire month to read this book um, because it is massive um, and it was also just quite hard for me to read because I was busy and it is quite dense so I only read like 50, 100 pages at a time for a while there um, plus there were like days in between that I like didn't read at all. So this book took me quite a long time but it definitely had a big payoff. So. Um, I'm going to be talking about this book. I gave this book a 4.75 out of 5 stars just because I gut reaction could not give it the 5 out of 5 stars and I will be talking about why and everything like that. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna get right on in to tell you guys all about this book. Firstly, if you guys are wondering what edition I have, it is the paperback vintage edition um, and I really quite like this one. It is very, very floppy and this is over 700 pages, about 700 40 pages so um okay so for people who don't know first off I had no idea what this book was going into it I'm not gonna lie like I had I thought I had an idea of what it was about but I was kind of more just going off of my friends recommendations and reviews um but I had no idea what this book was about and I was honestly like this much disappointed when I realized what it was about but I very quickly got over that disappointment um uh, I for some reason thought this was magical realism it's got like the smidgest amount of magical realism to the point I don't even know if you can call it that um but for some reason I thought this was a magical realism I don't really know why this book follows a man named Samuel who his mother left him and his father 20 years before when he was still a child and now he is an adult and he works at a college he's a professor and he is kind of lonely he spends all of his free time that he's not teaching um and doing stuff playing elfscape which to me seemed like runescape or like world of warcraft and overall he just has a very plain boring kind of existence he doesn't have a wife he doesn't have a girlfriend it's just him yeah and throughout this book there are so many plot lines happening so we have the plot line of samuel's mother comes back into his life because she is in the news um for a huge court case against her because she threw rocks at a politician who was running for president i think at the time or something like that um and obviously she's being attacked and like brought to jail and stuff because they think this was like a movement against a politician and against like all of this stuff and like terrorism it was crazy um and he, the, first off, doesn't even realize that it's his mom at first until her lawyer calls him up and is like, hey, will you write a letter to the judge telling them what an amazing mother he, she is? And he's like, she left me when I was like a child, so I don't know if I can do that. We also have this, a couple subplot lines of there's a girl that Samuel, he failed her essay because he, uh, she plagiarized and she like goes through all of this stuff to try to get him fired and she's like, that was a crazy person to read about. And then we also have his online friend, Ponage, Ponage, something like that, I don't know how to say it, um, who he has his own kind of subplot of like trying to get healthier, kind of. And then we follow multiple time periods. So each, this is split into, I think like seven, eight, nine parts or something like that. And um, in some of the parts we are in 2011 and sometimes we are in 1968 eight and sometimes we're in like the 1990s so um in 1968 we follow his mother from her point of view when she was in high school going into college because she was a woman during this time and most women that during her time period and like in where she lived would just settle down get married and have kids at, um after high school but she wants to go to college so she tries to go to chicago for college and then it follows her in the riots and um protests and stuff of chicago during that time period and then in 2011 we obviously follow samuel who is trying to unravel his mother's mystery because she's obviously been gone for these 20 years and things just aren't adding up with her story from her past either and then also in the 1990s we get a backstory on Samuel and his childhood and um, the dynamic of his parents during his childhood and stuff like that. We also meet the best character ever which is Bishop um, and we follow him and also Samuel's first love Bethany and stuff like that um, and yeah this book. 
has a lot going on, obviously, from that summary. You can tell there's a lot happening in this. Of course, it is 730 pages. It's a long book, and Nathan Hill gets a lot done in those 730 pages, and this was an insane book for a debut. Let me just put that out there. This book, first off, is amazingly written. It is really, really good. It's really complex, and it's really deep. And it also deals with so many subjects that I don't think, like, senior authors would want to deal with. Um, so I must applaud Nathan Hill for tackling all of these things in his first novel. So we're going to get on into my own personal thoughts about this. I obviously have a bunch of things tabbed in this book, and I obviously gave it a 4.75 out of 5 stars, so I obviously really, really enjoyed it. I loved the writing. Um, the writing was amazing, really, really impressed. I will definitely be picking up more by him just simply because his writing was so incredible. Um, well, when he comes out with more. This is his first book and he has nothing else, so. I loved the characters. The characters, every single one of them was just so real because every single one of them had motivations and flaws and characteristics of, like, actual people. Um, and quite a few of them just, like, I could look at and like place an actual person from my life into that character. Like they were all just so incredibly real and fleshed out and Nathan Hill did not like jip out on any of the characters except for one which I was a little annoyed with. So he really really dug deep in each and every character. Even like the random girl from college who's trying to get Samuel fired, we follow a ton from her and we find out a bunch about her. Um, so yeah, Nathan Hill really has a talent in making characters believable. I also really enjoyed the plot. I obviously was a little disappointed when I figured out what it actually was about because at first I was like, this is a book about a woman who, like, throws rocks at a politician and her son. Like, how how is this going to be interesting for 700 pages? Um, but it definitely is. Like, it's crazy. It's also a plotline that I don't think I've ever read about. Like, I don't know if this kind of plotline happens a lot in books I'm just not reading, but I've never read anything even remotely similar to this, especially because it seems so contemporary and then you do have the tiny little aspect of the Nyx, which is a type of ghost that Faye, which is Samuel's mom, um, learns about in her childhood and then she tells to Samuel when he's a child and it kind of is a thing that haunts both of them throughout their lives and connects them. So it had amazing writing, amazing characters, really unique plotline, and overall this book just, especially the ending, it was like just really shocking. Like I didn't see certain things coming, like especially there's one character who kind of reveals something at the end and I did not see it coming at all. Like towards the end as we were leading up to it, I was like, oh my god, and then it finally got revealed and I was like, oh my god, um, how did I not see this coming? So um, it was pretty crazy. Now getting on into the small things that I didn't like about this book. There were only two things really, which is only which is why it only got docked 0.25 out of 5. Like it didn't get docked that much just because there were two things. One, there was about at about page 600 or so. Like 600 to like 690, like about 100 pages of the book. I just got a little bored. It, this is definitely a story that can take up the full 700 pages, but there were just a couple of things that I just got really bored at. And it might be just pers like my personal thing, but like there was a whole section that we learned about Faye's father, and I was just like, I don't really know why we're doing this. Like, yeah, he was a part of the book, but like not really. Um, and then during Nathan Hill describing the protests and riots in Chicago with Faye, I just personally got kind of bored by it. It was just like pages and pages and pages of like the same thing kind of to me. Um, so those are two things that I just, those sections dragged for me, per but like that might just be a personal thing, so. The only other thing that bothered me so much was the character of Bishop. Bishop is a young boy when we first meet him, and he's in Samuel's childhood. It, he kind of becomes Samuel's best friend, um, and his sister is Bethany, which is Samuel's first love, and we find out about him during the childhood chapter, and then we find about, out about him during one other chapter, and then he's just gone. Like, he's never mentioned again throughout the entire book. And that bothered me a lot because I had he was a character that I had so many questions about. He was the most interesting character to me by far. And I just wanted to know more about him. I would have read an entire book about that boy. Um, and I just... There was something kind of revealed about him that, like, got discussed for a couple of pages. But then, like, never again. 
and I was just like I wanted an ending to that like I wanted to I wanted to know and then yeah no so there's at the end of one chapter something happens and then he's never mentioned again and I'm just like was this character literally made just for like this one line in the book that affects Samuel's life because I was like really angry about that because literally let me see the last time he is mentioned is page 405 um, and then for the rest of this book, he is not mentioned at all. And, like, yeah, you might be like, well, he was in 400 of the 700 pages, but not really. He was only in, like, that much, and then, like, a couple chapters back here. Like, he wasn't, like, a main focus. And I just really wanted to know more about him. Of course, that's all, again, kind of a personal thing. I just really liked that character, and I was really annoyed that we didn't hear about him for, like, the rest of the book. And even at the end, we didn't get any, like, ending kind of about him and his arc and his plot line. Um, but yeah, other than that, I really, really enjoyed this book and I really recommend it. Um, I would probably say a little bit of an older audience, this is definitely an adult novel, deals with some crazy stuff. There's, I guess, kind of trigger warnings for drugs, drug abuse, protests, riots, police brutality kind of thing, pregnancy, abortions, parents leaving their kids, <laughs> neglect, I don't know, stuff like that. Um, there's also child abuse, like child sexual abuse. I don't know how to put that. Um, all of those things are in this book. So if you're uncomfortable with any of that, I would say do not read it because it definitely doesn't, this is a book I really, I, I've said this before, I really like when books don't sugarcoat anything and this book definitely did not sugarcoat anything. Um, so it's not just like men casual mentions of those things, it goes into depth of them. So if you're not comfortable with it, don't think it's only gonna get mentioned like once, It like they go into detail. So yeah, I would definitely say an older audience on this one just because of those mature kind of themes, um, plus it is an adult book, so. It's long, it's dense, it's complex, so, yeah. But yes, I really, really enjoyed this book. I am so happy I finally read it, even though it did take me quite a while. I thank you to Graham um, for pushing me through this, constantly commenting on my statuses while I was reading this, just making sure I was still enjoying it. I appreciate you so much um, because I really did end up loving it. Um, and all of those other people who always were commenting and liking my statuses as I was reading this. I appreciate you guys all so much for motivating me to read this book um, because yeah I definitely get a little discouraged when a book takes me this long to read but this one luckily the payout was very very great. So again if you're taking a while to read this just know it does it just you will feel so accomplished when you finish it because I definitely did and I have been recommending this to everyone. Like I finished my copy and I immediately was like, mom has to read it, dad has to read it, friend has to read it. So this is definitely going to be given out to a lot of people. Um, but yes, I hope you guys all enjoyed this review and definitely leave down in the comments below if you have read this book, um, what you thought of it. I've seen mostly um, positive reviews, so I would actually kind of love to hear if anyone didn't like this book um, and why. Um, because yeah, I think everyone that I know has really, really enjoyed this. So definitely leave all of your thoughts down in the comments below. Um, and did you agree with my pros and cons and stuff like that? Did anyone else get annoyed that Bishop, did anyone else notice that Bishop wasn't mentioned for the last half of the book? Because I did. <laughs> Anyways, I love you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!